Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. It is actually a River Valley Transit night tonight on the Pete Mazzetti Show. And with me to discuss everything going on with River Valley Transit is my buddy Brendan from River Valley. Good to see you, Pete. Hey, it's bud. Been a while. How's How are you? One? Good. How are you? Long time no see. It's Absolutely. been a while. Yeah, I got some plenty of stuff to talk about. It's always well, good. Come back fully loaded. So. Well, what, where, where should we start? Sure. Well, I guess, you know, we've had a pretty big day recently. On, on May 28th, we launched a lot of our brand new service. Yeah. So uh, we've launched a variety of things, but I guess the, the first thing we can talk about maybe is our um, server span expansion sure. across the entire system. So yeah, yeah. so um, for a little background, we applied about a year or so ago, we applied for a series of service increases across our entire system, right? So we applied for, um, we knew there was going to be some money available to increase service, so we yeah. didn't know what it was for, though. Okay. So we basically just applied for everything under the sun. So we applied for <laughs> new bus routes. We applied for increasing frequency on bus routes, so having buses come more frequently. Right. Uh, we also applied for um, increasing the server span, so meaning having more hours the bus runs. Right. Yes. So those are the three main things, new routes, fa more frequent service, or having service run longer. Yes. But we didn't know what was going to get funded. We knew the governor was going to have this um, funding expansion across the state, which we were excited about, and right. we didn't know what they were going to be. So we applied for everything, and we found out the answer of the day was span. That was sort of the theme that we saw across the state, was that a lot of money was given to service span expansion, including us. So right. what that means is we got money for many of our routes to have more weeknight service, so going to 11 p.m., more bus routes going to 11 p.m., Saturday night service, so again, more buses starting from 8 to 11 p.m., and then our most exciting, I think, thing uh, uh, in a long time is in Sunday service. We got Sunday service for the first time ever, which is really exciting. Um, and so it's been a, a, we just launched it again May 28th, that, that week right after um, Memorial Day. Yeah. And so since then, we've you know, just started back up again. But it's been really exciting. And um, we're really happy to have this new service for, for all of our riders. Um, and so a little bit more about sort of how it's breaking down. So uh, Middletown got the majority of the funding, so we applied for both Shoreline routes and Middletown routes. Yep. It seems the the um, interest was in providing more funding to, to Middletown, which is also you know which definitely needed and, and we put good put to good use. Mm -hmm. um, so that means in Middletown, most of the bus routes now are running to 11 p.m. on those weeknights, on Saturday nights, and then Sunday service, uh, which is really exciting. And I know a lot of people have been clamoring for that. A lot of the major employers in the region are open on Sunday. Right. For example, our biggest employer, Middletown, for our riders and a main source of ridership on some of our main routes. Is things like FedEx, right? Those things run 24-7. There's yes. a lot of opportunities where people are working now on Sunday. Or even you can go to church. You can go to the grocery store. There's a lot more things you can do where you couldn't do before right. in our system. So opening that extra day and you having the full seven days just kind of really opens opportunities for people that mm -hmm. I think it, I had a good opportunity on, on that Tuesday to kind of go to the Middletown bus terminal and talk to the riders and let them know about the changes, kind of make sure people were aware. Right. Um, and a lot of the people that were I talked to were excited about Sunday, you know, for, again, all those same reasons. So... Um, we're really hopeful that that'll be um, well utilized, and we actually had a pretty good. Our first Sunday was pretty good ridership. Actually, we were, we were pretty happy that people were were aware of it, and I'm sure it'll continue to grow. So um, that's great. But in the shoreline, we didn't get as much as we wanted. No. In fact, we actually initially didn't get anything, so we kind of had to fight for the shoreline a little bit. We knew that, you know, obviously Middletown is super important. We wanted to make sure we have a lot of service there, and we do. And the majority of the money went there, which is great. But we still wanted to make sure that the shoreline got something because there's a need here as well. Oh, yeah. And in fact, the 641 bus actually recently, which is that's our bus that, for folks who don't know, that serves the Boston Post Road. Yeah. So it goes from Old Saybrook all the way to Madison, and it picks up a lot of different people, a lot of different destinations. People use it for employment, for mm -hmm. shopping, and even for getting from place to place. So that's our actually our, our biggest route. And for a long time, it was actually one of our top routes. So it was one of our top two or three ridership routes. Actually, last month was actually our highest ridership route, which is kind of really? crazy. It even be all uh, all the routes in Middletown. That that 4641 bus in the, in the little shoreline there was actually the most popular route last month. So it just goes to show that there are ways they need here for more service. And after some convincing, we were able to actually get um, funding and some some rearranging. We were actually get some enough funding to have um, the 641 bus run on Sunday, which is great. Cool. So it'll be the exact same Saturday schedule. So there's no confusion. Basically now, whatever you can use on Saturday, you can now do on Sunday as well okay. for the shoreline. So that again makes all those options available to people Monday through Sunday. So we're we're very excited about that. Cool. Yeah. Now the other the other cool thing that I've noticed when you guys ran when you started your, the new schedules mm -hmm. with the buses running every hour. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Is that. If you want to go up to the outlets, you got to watch what bus you jump on. 
because one there's one one run goes to the Westbrook outlets, yes. and then the other run goes to the Clinton outlets. Absolutely. It's like, huh? Yeah, I can tell we're with that. So that's a, that's a great thing. It is a huh. So we know, it's gonna, why are we going there? So that's a great question. That was a, a trade-off to make that hour possible. Oh, okay. So one thing we, we did with in October of 2023 is we had a series of changes, right? So this is, this is kind of the easy part where we had uh, more service. This time I'm coming to talk to you guys about more service, but in the past, we made route changes. So instead of you know, cost-neutral route changes, these are right. additional funding. So with our cost-neutral changes, one of the things we wanted to do in the shoreline is before we made the changes, we had this big transfer point at the old city train station where yes. four buses met. Yep. The problem was they weren't actually meeting, so they were coming at completely different times. So if you took the 643 example from New from New London, yeah. got to Old Cedarbrook and you wanted to get to Madison, you'd have to wait, you know, 50 minutes. And it's not that you shouldn't have to wait yeah, an no. hour to catch your next bus. It should be right there. So what we did is we took a chance and we we rearranged the schedule so that all the buses meet on the hour, what we call a pulse system, meaning all the buses are there to meet. So now you'll see all the buses meet uh, all, at the old train station lined up so you can hop from one bus and walk to the next one. And then it leaves in five minutes instead of having to wait 40 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. And it just kind of simplified the entire system and made it a little easier for folks to transfer from one system to the next. Mm -hmm. And ultimately it, short, it shortens the amount of travel time it takes, right? So if you can get from you know, New London to um, Madison, it would take you about two hours Right. One bus run here, a second bus from there combined, it's about an hour, 45 minutes. Right. If you then have to wait an additional 50 minutes for your next stop, then that travel time becomes almost three hours, right? So obviously <laughs> it's public transportation, so we're not gonna be as fast as a car. Yeah, right. But then if you add an additional hour wait time, it really makes it exorbitant. So mm -hmm. we, tried it, we tried that. And so getting back to your point about the two outlet malls, in order to make that work, the initial run in, uh, before October, the bus took, actually took an hour and a half Sorry, an hour and 15 minutes to get between Old Saybrook and Madison. And with, 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 in order to make sure we can actually have it every hour, right. we had to shorten the route up. Ah. So we shortened it up and we had it so that we have, instead of going to the Outlet Mall and the Clinton uh, Crossing Mall and the Westbrook Outlet Mall, mm -hmm. we actually have a set, it's, it's switched to so one and we'll do that one and the other. That way we can get to under an hour and that way we can actually have it be hourly instead of every other hour. So that's cool. kind of how we did that run. So it was sort of a trade off there. And also we noticed that Frankly, the Westbrook Mall wasn't doing as well as we uh, for ridership as in the past as well. Right. So that was another consideration. Exactly. Yeah. And I actually like the buses running every hour on the hour. Yeah. Just in case you need them, it's like okay. Exactly. It, it's it's easy and it's it's um, you know it's you know every it's at the every top of every, every hour there'll be a bus there, so it's kind of nice to know. Yeah. Now, explain this to me. Mm -hmm. How come in when the bus gets to Clinton, yep. you guys don't go into shop right or stop and shop. Another good question. So that was another change too. So a couple of different things there. Part of it's time. It, yeah. it does take a lot of time to get in there, but the bigger part um, is, the parking awesome, lot. <laughs> is the parking lot, is safety. So we'd like to obviously pull in there. The, the issue is, one well, again, it's the timing issue, which right. we had to shave some time off somewhere. The second issue is We've had a lot of close calls in there, especially in that ShopRite plaza. That's been mm -hmm. particularly bad. Yep. Um, so we've got cars coming in, people coming in. These 30-foot buses, believe it or not, actually aren't meant to really pull into that many of the shopping locations, unless they're actually designed to be accessible by bus, right? So a lot of folks, when they're building a shopping center, at least historically in the shoreline, they're not going to be designed to build a bus that's designed for cars, which, again, makes sense. It's, right. it's demographics of the area. Sure. But when we can't pull in there and get out very well, it's kind of dangerous for everybody and it's sort of an accident waiting to happen. So it was kind of a safety issue, a time yeah. issue, and so that was sort of what we, where we came to be. But I do know it was an inconvenience for some of our riders, um, so we were definitely still weighing it, but it seems to be right now, we haven't heard too many complaints, so, right. um, but we'll keep an eye on it though. Yep. And now I understand we also have the Passport to the Park program. Yeah, so that's a, that's a really exciting program. Park Connect is what, what they call it. Um, wrong term. I'm that's so, okay. That's we, my we get the right vibe. Pass, I, pass <laughs> the park. I kind of like that. It's, that's good. Um, there is a uh, Park Connect program which happens um, last, the last few summers now, and, and we were uh, lucky enough to get additional funding to do it this year. It's funded through DOT and through DEEP, the okay. Department of Energy uh, and Protection, Environmental Protection, as well as um, Department of Transportation. And basically, the goal is to have folks get to the um, national to get to the uh, local state parks, right? right. So Go for us, that's Hammond Hammond Asset. Right, for us, that's Hammond Asset. That's the big draw here. You know, one of the largest beaches in Connecticut, it's definitely right. a big draw. So we have a few services that, that fall under this thing we call Park Connect. 
And Park Connect is free, first of all, which is always good. I like to mention that Park Connect is free. There's no fare at all. No. Nope. Use any of these services. And there's a few different types. So our first service is the 645 bus route, which is our actually a normal route we run every single day, Monday through Saturday. But on Sunday, it becomes free. Okay. And I, and, and this, so I should say this route um, serves Madison, goes up through Killingworth, Haddam, and goes to Middletown. So it's sort of a regional oh, connection okay. between Middletown and the shoreline, right? Um, so it, you know, it actually gets good ridership on its own. But then on Sunday, during, during from um, Memorial Day to Labor Day, it becomes this Park Connect program where you can take the bus for free and it pulls you right into Hamanassi Beach. Cool. So it not only it doesn't just take you there, it will go right through. I don't know if, don't know if you know this, Pete, but oftentimes um, Hamanassi Beach can get pretty full. Mm -hmm. They'll turn people away. Sometimes pretty early. Oh, yeah. It was like 9, 10 o'clock. They were saying, sorry, the parking lot's full. Yeah. If you take Park Connect, you don't have to worry about that. They let us in even if the parking lot's full. So we'll walk right, we can drive, they'll drive right in through there, we drop you off, um, cause parking's concerned about people. So we'll oh, just, yeah. we'll drive right in. And so um, I know we're definitely excited about it and you know, it's gotten some, some decent ridership in the past, but the more people who use it, the better chance we'll have it'll continue on the future. So each year it's funded kind of individually each year. So it's not long-term funded. So every year they're looking at the ridership, they're looking at the data to see, is it worth it to keep going? So right. I recommend folks that if you're interested in all, give it a try because any and using these services will help make sure they stay that way. So right. definitely give it a try if you're interested. So that's one of our first services. Our second is the Clinton Trolley. It's been around for a long time. You might be familiar with that at all. Do me a favor. Yes. I saw the new trolley. Oh, you saw the new trolley, huh? The other day, a couple, a couple weekends ago, I was out and about and happened to see the new trolley. Yeah. I guess the, the trolley got a makeover, we might say. It did get a makeover, so it's a little, <laughs> little more modern trolley. So we, we had a really, really awesome, and we still do have it, but it's, it's an awesome trolley. It's real, super old school. Like it's, actually, it's like a, it looks really like a trolley. Yes. Um, but it's, it's over 20 years old, um, and it's sort of starting to see better days. So we did get a new trolley, um, and it, it looks great, and we like it a lot. And uh, it's basically like, it looks a little more like a normal bus, but it still has the, you know, I don't know what you call it, not the gondola on top, but it has the, the cupola. It's got yep. the cupola on top. It's got the whole you know, the paint job and the wood. And when you go inside, when it's really cool, when you go in, when you actually get inside the bus, it's all wooden benches. It really is kind of like taking a step back in time. I know. And the kids love it too. The really? kids love it, they love getting in there. And, and we actually did an event, um, a series of holiday, we did a holiday trolley in Middletown for the- um, I saw this. For the, uh, uh, in December, for the yep. kind of the holiday time. And we had, you know, put, you know, um, you know holiday lights around it, had people on oh, there cool. and they were playing. It was a lot of fun. So, so that's the kind of thing that, um, the trolley can provide and um, obviously it, it, there's the utility of, of the Clinton trolley because it basically gets you from Clinton, the town docks, the town center, Boston Post Road, pulls you into Madison. And again, this also goes directly into the, into the park. So right. with the Clinton trolley, what's great is the 45 bus is great to get you from Middletown to the, to the trolley. Right. But once the Clinton trolley is great for once you're there, let's say you want to then go you know, get some lunch or you want right. to go shopping a little bit. From the beach, you can just hop on your hop on the trolley. It's yeah. free, and you just hop on, go to your thing, do your thing, hop on the trolley again when it's coming back in, and you get back into the, the park. So it's kind of a great way to get around locally, right? So you have the the more regional transportation, and then you've got the more local transportation for Park Connect. Again, it's all free, and the the trolley kind of theme is a nice little bonus. It feels right, it feels right at home in the shoreline, yeah, which is always nice. Um, and then our last service, which is kind of cool, which will probably talk about soon as well as our, our new extra mile zone. Actually, and, you know what? we'll talk about the extra mile when we come back. That sounds good. Let's do All that. Right. We'll be right back. It was kind of the storm of the century or the 500 year um, flood or storm that um, by some estimates over 15 inches of rain fell over a three day period on June 4th, 5th and 6th, 1982. What is pickleball? The sport that has captivated millions with its combination of tennis, badminton and ping pong can be played one on one or two on two. Hi, thanks for joining me. This is September Selectman's update. Hello everyone, Carl Fortuna here again with another monthly update. Good 
morning, everyone. Today's the Town Council regular meeting, Wednesday, October 4th, 2023 at 8 a.m. Town Hall Green Room. Uh, Tom and Rick had a part of that. Back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti sitting here with Brendan from River Valley Transit. Welcome back, my friend. Thank you very much, Pete. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we were talking about the all the fun stuff coming with River Valley mm -hmm. Transit. And I believe, from what I remember, mm -hmm. Extra Mile got expanded. It did. That's right, Pete. So again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with the surf span expansion on uh, May 28th, also on May 28th, yes. we, had, we, had a, we had a busy day on May 28th, <laughs> uh, we also launched two brand new extra mile zones. Let's right? talk so, about it. So for folks who don't know, we have current extra mile zones in Old Saybrook and it also covers portions of Westbrook and Essex. That's our kind of our marquee zone, our original yep. zone, been around since 2019, a lot of people know about it. And then we have a pilot in Middletown that's been going on. So those are kind of our two zones that we've had before. Um, and for again, a little more context too about for folks want to know what is extra mile if you're not aware basically it's an on-demand service um, it uses like a general map zone area and within that area you can request a ride on demand or you can book in advance so it truly is like an uber or a lyft right. kind of like a public transit version of that where it's like a shuttle vehicle it'll pick you up drop you off where you need to go um, and you can use, use our app which is a pretty cool app you can it is. your destinations it, it, it's we had some issues with it at first, but it seems to be getting better now. It's definitely a lot more smoother. And they can also call in to book a ride as well. Um, but the, the app is definitely the best use of our, our version. That's called Extra Mile by RVT. Yeah. That's available both on the um, Android or Google, um, or, or um, excuse me, Google or iPhone. Either one of those will we'll have an app there, which is great. And it's a free app. And uh, it's $1.75 anywhere in that zone. So that's basically the basic deal of it, right? It's on demand, ride sharing, public transportation, Uber, Lyft. It's basically the general quick uh, quick sales pitch of it. And so that's been going on since 2019. That's a great service. Um, it really has exploded in growth. Right now we do about anywhere between 60 to 100 rides a day, which is great. So we have a lot of people using the, the service. Uh, it's been a great, um, people like the convenience of it, how it's on demand. And so we, there's a statewide grant, which is um, exciting because the state wanted to take a look at, uh, do, when I say the state, I mean DOT. Right. DOT wanted, and, and actually the legislature, um, wanted to take a look at does microtransit work, and microtransit is this extra mile that's on demand kind of service. Right. Does microtransit work across the state? They wanted to see, does it work in urban areas? Does it work in rural areas? Does it work in suburban areas, right? And so, lucky enough for us, we're in a region that has all three. Right. So we applied for all three. We said, you know what, we'll apply for all three. Maybe we'll get one or two and we'll be happy, right? So we applied for Middletown for our urban area. We applied for East Hampton, the Belltown area, as our rural area. Yeah. And we applied for the entirety of Madison Guilford, which is a which is a bold a bold move, but we did it um, <laughs> for the entire town boundaries. It's a, they're both big towns uh, for our suburban area, and so that's what we applied for. And we thought, yeah, maybe we get one or two. Turns out we got all three, which is exciting. We were right. very excited. I mean, we were happy to have it. Um, but it was definitely oh wow. You know, so so we started working on it, and um, we have the new. We launched two of our three zones. The reason why I'm not saying three of three is we have um, the Middletown zone that operates more on a semester-based schedule. Yep. That's to cater more towards the Wesleyan Wesley crowd. Wesleyan, so yep. that's sort of what, it'll be a way to save money too, so it's only on certain times of the year, right? So okay. come the fall, you'll, that'll also be launched in, in Middletown. Um, but so the two year-round zones, which is, as I mentioned, a small zone in East Hampton. Mm -hmm. It's operated by one vehicle, um, and it's primarily in the Belltown area. So it's, right. it's good. It's a very lo hyper local service. It's from getting you to the residential areas there, to the stop and shop, to the airline trail, to the the Dollar General, to the town clerk, to the to the lake. Right. It's a very local gotcha. service. Right. Very small, uh, and that's we want to also test not only in rural, urban, and suburban areas, but also different sizes. Right. Because mm -hmm. one of the things to consider about this is. Think of extra mile like a big map or a big zone. Right. The bigger the zone you make, 
the more vehicles you need to make that zone work well. Yes. If you have a massive zone, right, and you have one vehicle in there, the wait times are going to be atrocious. You're going to be waiting an hour, three, depending on how busy right. it gets, right? So you have to kind of match the amount of um, drivers and vehicles to the, how big the zone is or how many people there are, right? So in East Hampton, it's small, but there's still a good amount of density and a good right. amount of things to go to. So we, th we got away with one vehicle there in Madison and Guilford, which is the entirety of two towns and has about mm -hmm. 40,000 people combined population. So it's not, not nothing. That we have between three, four, five vehicles operating in that zone. So oh, wow. That's the kind of, for scale there, right? The, more, the bigger the zone you have, the more vehicles you need and the more it costs to run that service effectively. So that's kind of how we came to be with that. And um, yeah, so we're very excited about, about those programs. And, and Madison and Guilford, as I mentioned, is the entirety of those two towns. Yeah. But we think it'll grow well because it has mm. similar aspects and similar amenities that Old Saybrook does, being the train right. stations, you know, some dense population centers and some, a lot of good retail too, which can yeah. be a driver of these things. Um, those are the kind of things we look for when it comes to whether a search will be good, right? You know, are there people there? Are yes. there things to do there? Are there places that people want to go with this right. transit, right? If there's not, it's not going to be a good option for a service like this. So yeah. those are the places we chose and, and we just launched them and um, it's been exciting to see the results so far. Cool. Yeah. Now, extra mile in Madison and Guilford, what are, what are those hours of operation? Yes, actually, thank you. Thank you for asking that. So I have them right here. Actually, this is our, our brand new. You mean you don't know these off the top of your head? Believe, believe it or not, I actually do, but I just want to make sure I don't, I don't mess it up in front of oh, okay. for everybody. So I have these, <laughs> I also have, if you see these around, these are actually um, our little our little postcards you should be seeing around. They have all the information, the hours, the even the QR code to download the app. That's pretty cool. Um, so I'll tell you each one. So for Madison and Guilford, they are Monday through Friday, six to seven p.m. six a.m. to seven p.m. Okay. And then on Saturday, seven thirty to six p.m. Cool. And there's no Sunday service into the route. And then on Belltown um, in East Hampton, our hours are Monday through Friday, seven a.m. to six p.m. And then eight a.m. to five p.m. on Saturday, again, with no cool. Sunday service. So that's sort of our 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 test there. Um, mm -hmm. And these are actually um, pilot zones. So this is a pilot project. So what that means is these are not long-term funded necessarily. So this is a, a test that the state's doing. They want to see how these work. So we have two years of confirmed funding, meaning that this is a two-year pilot. So we'll try it for two years. We'll collect all the data. We'll see yeah. how is the ridership. Are people using it? Was there a good customer experience? Do people want it more right, to continue? And then there's all additional potential option years to extend this further if it goes well. right? So if we okay. see good ridership, if we see people liking the service, uh, if there's good community adoption, there's a better, a better chance. I can't guarantee anything. There's a much better chance it'll continue if we have right. good ridership. So um, all the more reason to give it a try too. So if, if folks are, are thinking in, in these areas or want to give it a try, um, feel free to get to $1.75. It's not too bad. No. I can tell you if you're trying to get an Uber or Lyft, you're not going to get it for $1.75. No, I can, I can guarantee you that. So yeah, right. uh, it's definitely a cost-effective option. Right now, our wait times, um, on average, this, is, this isn't just in our new zones, this is on average in our existing yep. zones are between 10 to 20 minutes. So it's a pretty good yeah, thing. Yeah, it's not bad. You book a ride now and in 15 minutes your ride shows up. It's not, not a bad deal for no. $1.75. So um, definitely give it a shot. And it's kind of a new, innovative public transportation, you know, way of doing things, right? Mode, I sort of speak. So um, it's definitely been around for only maybe five, 10 years now. So it is a very new kind of concept that we're happy to expand in our region. And the and the fun the funny thing is is on the extra mile zone that covers Westbrook Old Saybrook mm -hmm. that th this immediate area. Yep. It only go for, like if you want to get uh, get off in Westbrook. Yeah. The drop point is the upper deck. Oh, okay. It doesn't So sort of where the edges. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's a couple miles up up the road. Yeah, not too and far. It's yeah. the the up the, the upper deck is where the where the turnaround is because for some reason I thought they went past to, to where like Lenny and Joe's where the fishtail is oh, okay. right across yep. from Dairy Queen they were yep. like no they're like this is the that's, that's the end point yeah this, this is the end point I'm like oh yeah. okay yeah and that's the thing sometimes you have to draw the line somewhere it's fine sometimes it, it's, <laughs> you try and do as much as you can but then you go oh well you just add a little more to this place then a little more to this place right so it keeps going and you do have to kind of shut off you have to finalize the zone somewhere, right? right. But so sometimes it can be a little, little strange. But um, what's nice too about these zones, well, I should say Madison and Guilford's pretty static because again, it's the entirety of both towns. Yeah. Every inch of the, both those towns is covered. That's a big town. But when it comes to East Hampton, we're definitely open to feedback when it comes. If we need to tweak it, make it a little bigger here and there, it's fine. We just can't make it huge again because we only have funding for one driver. So if we right. make it the entire town, or somehow factor in Colchester, it'll just, it'll be too big. Yeah, no, it's so going to be ginormous. So we gotta try and you know we can tweak it here and there again. It's a pilot. There's some there's some wiggle room potentially, but 
Um, we gotta be cognizant enough, we wanna keep wait times low and it actually be a good service. We'd rather it be a, a good service in a smaller area than a horrible service in a big area. Right, yeah. So no, that's kind you, of what we're, we're that. looking at, so. You don't want yeah. that. Yeah. And last time you and I were together, we were talking about the electronic signs at, in Madison sure. yeah. and in Saybrook. Yeah. Did those come to fruition yet? They did, yeah. So those have both been installed. Okay. Um, one at the old Saybrook um, train station. If folks are familiar, um, there's a little bus shelter there. It's sort of our hub where all the buses line up. And mm -hmm. there's now inside that bus shelter, there's a cool, it's about you know eight and a half by 11 roughly, okay. um, electronic sign. Um, it's battery operated and it shows when the bus is gonna be there. So it actually has the real time information. So you can see, okay, the 641 bus is two minutes late and you can see, or the 642 is right on time. You can actually see when the bus will get there, which is kind of cool. Right. Um, and then the same, that same device is also located in the Scranton Gizzi in Madison. Oh, cool. Which is another one of our um, transfer points where we have the 641 bus, 645 bus that goes to, um, to Middletown. Then our, our partners at CT Transit who operate the 201 that goes to New Haven. Right? So it's not yes. us, but we still want to promote them because it's the a lot bus. of our riders come yep. right, from there. So uh, or, or trying to get to New Haven or coming from New Haven. So. Um, definitely a, uh, a good thing to promote there too. The city bus. Yes, exactly. The, the city the, bus. The yep, yep. And uh, yeah, it's definitely. And then in Middletown, we have um, uh, even more stuff. We have out, outdoor signs and even a seven-foot-tall kiosk that has the map and all the routes. Oh, and one thing I will mention is we've been a little disappointed with the performance of the real-time information, so the actual route yeah. times. Yeah. But I will say it is getting better, and so we're working with a developer on that. The, the vendor, I should say, who who you know, uses these services for us. Right. And so we're getting a lot closer. So you should start, those times should start being looking a lot more accurate. So Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a process, but it's nice that it, it's moving. Take it a little longer than we like, but at least it's, it's getting there now. So. Cool. Yeah. And if people want more information on River Valley Transit, where can they go? Sure. So they can go to river, rivervalleytransit.org. That's a great place to go, rivervalleytransit.com. And, um, and then there's, on that website, there's a lot of different things. They have all of our schedules. We even have interactive maps and even a trip planner. So if you wanted to say get to X location, it'll tell you the best way to get there via public transit. So there's a lot of different cool tools on there and we also have any updates. So um, you can download our, all of our guides and even um, it'll have like a little, little blog post where we'll have new updates about what's going on. So all, these, all the new information will be up there. So um, cool. definitely a great place to, to visit for more information. Cool. Brendan from River Valley, thanks, thanks for your time. Much, we'll see Appreciate you soon. It. Sounds good. All right. Thank on you. On behalf of Brendan, I'm Pete Muzzetti. Thanks. Good night. We'll see you next week.